are you a slave to? Now that might seem like a strange question, what are you a slave to? But if you really think about it, we can be slaves to many things. I'm not talking about the usual alcohol or cigarettes. I'm also talking about a slave to being right. You might be a slave to a job you're not particularly enthusiastic or like. You're getting the idea, right? There's just many things that we can be a slave to. And the reason I want to open this subject is because I want to help you escape that enslavement. And you know there's a saying, if you want to really learn something, the best thing is to learn it from someone who has accomplished what you want to accomplish. And in this case, we're going to go back a couple of thousand years to ancient Greece. We discovered that there was a man called Epictetus. Epictetus was a slave his whole life. In fact, the name Epictetus means he who has been begotten. He is a possession. So imagine this man, he, his whole life was a slave to a Roman noble, but he did have some time to help himself to learn how to read by asking other people, by hanging around those symposiums of that noble. He was a smart man, Epictetus, and by the time it was the second half of his life, he was able to actually get his freedom. In other words, the noblemen who owned him gave him his freedom. Epictetus left that manor house and traveled back to his country of Greece, a place called Nikopolis, which still exists today. And there he founded the schools which would study Stoicism and the lessons of Socrates. People came from all over to listen to Epictetus because he, this former slave, had now opened a school of philosophy. It's amazing when you think about it. And later on his teachings were to be read by people like Marcus Aurelius, the whole Caesar of the whole Roman Empire. Marcus Aurelius actually lived by the teachings of Epictetus, the Stoic teachings of Epictetus. Later on, much later on in our days, people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, all these amazing entrepreneurs and philanthropists also read the teachings of Epictetus. I'm going to tell you a very amazing story about a man called James Stockdale. Because he had read Epictetus, he had read the Stoic teachings of Epictetus, in 1965, that was the time of the Vietnam War, he went to serve his country as was his duty. And he was actually the captain of a very uh, big group of men. As they flew over Vietnam, his plane was bombed. And in the parachute, as he was coming down, he actually told himself, I now leave the world of technology and the civilized world. For the next five years, I'm going to be in the world of Epictetus. In fact, he was captured as a prisoner of war and spent the next seven years in prison, being tortured by the Vietnamese. And what kept him all these years to live on and to be strong were the sayings and teachings of Epictetus. So James Stockdale later ran as vice president under Ross Perot and became a national hero when he was, came back to the United States because even in that time in prison, he was still managing to lead his men who were also in the prison and being tortured. He still managed to really uh, give them enthusiasm for life and to believe in their rescue and their survival. Epictetus is trying to tell us that there's all sorts of external factors that can destroy your happiness if you let it. And the Enchiridion goes on to give three vital lessons. These three moral lessons have to do with A, focusing on your thoughts and your thoughts alone. B, doing what you know to be morally correct. In other words, sticking by your values and principles. And three, 
kind of going with the flow, you know, surfing the waves instead of fighting the waves. And I would like to go into much more detail about these three exercises and really have you practice them in your everyday life. And I tell you, you will have a radical shift in your everyday life. You will have a change in the way you view life. In a way, it's a kind of inner revolution that will take place when you do these three exercises. And I will share with you these amazing three techniques of Epictetus. It's getting chilly. Can I have my jacket, guys? Thanks. <laughs>